Another line that I underlined from your book was psychological stresses can enhance physical fitness and vice versa. Can you explain this idea of cross adaptation where doing mentally hard things can help us become physically stronger and vice versa? Yeah. What we're doing with the good stressors is we're improving the health of our cells. And that is, you know, one way to look at that is if you view um, your cells as coming off of an assembly line, if your cells are damaged, let's say um, your mitochondria are impaired or you have damage to your DNA or your proteins are damaged, that damage is going to go to wherever that cell is used. You know, so for example, um, it can be, you know, be a cell that's a neuron and that can compromise brain function. It can be a cell that goes to the heart. It compromises heart function. It can be a muscle cell. It compromises your muscle function. So essentially when you are incorporating any of the good stressors, whether they're mental or physical, you're improving the health of your cells and your cellular health is a micro version of your overall health. Um, cross adaptation really happens because whether you're using a physical stressor to improve the health of your cells or you're using a psychological stressor to improve the health of your cells, each kind of reinforces the other. And that is really part of the beauty of a good stress approach that you are creating this holistic approach to health that's connecting the mind and the body. It's like a systems biology approach um, that's making every part of you healthier. Um, and it's also helping multiple chronic diseases because the root of the chronic diseases that we see as well as aging is impairment of cellular function. Um, at its core, it's either mitochondria not working effectively, it's lack of autophagy, it is proteins being misshapen and damaged and not getting cleared out. Um, so I think this focus on cellular health is such a foundational way to build health and it works through um, this cross adaptation. And just to, to kind of be clear, what what are the good forms of psychological stress. So what are your favorite forms of psychological stress? Yeah, I strongly believe that we should work towards aligning our actions with our beliefs. I think one of the hidden sources of chronic stress in our lives is when there's dyssynchrony between what our core beliefs are and how we spend our day. Um, I think a lot of people view external stressors, um, like financial hardship, difficult relationships, job situations as their biggest stressors. Um, but this lack of alignment, um, creates such a chronic ongoing stress. Essentially your body perceives it as lying to yourself. Um, and it, um, creates the smoldering inflammation that can impact such, you know, have such a far reaching effect. So, I think that trying to create this alignment is so key. Um, and so I, I work very hard at really asking myself very hard questions of um, how am I spending my time and does it bring me a sense that what I'm doing is meaningful? Does it um, contribute to what I think is my purpose and um how do I adjust to my daily actions more towards that alignment? Um, because I think it has such a profound effect, not just on each of us as individuals, but it affects um, kind of this influence that we have on people around us in ways that aren't even always um, like spoken or said. Um, I think our end goal of trying to become these resilient selves is so that the influence we have on the people around us is one that uplifts them. And, and I think this hard work of finding that internal alignment is a key part of emitting a very resilient state and uplifting others. So we become kind of a a magnet of calm rather than chaos, where we attract rather than repel. Um, I think this is such a key part in 
arguably even more important than some of the physical stressors. You mentioned hard work, and it is work because you're looking inside. That takes a lot of of pausing, a lot of self-awareness, introspection, and the the easier avenue, the path of least resistance is to just not go there sometimes. So what what does that look like for you? How do you get cultivate that level of self-awareness and and introspection so you can kind of conduct that that order and make sure you're living congruently with your values and beliefs, as you say? I, I think you need to listen to your gut. I think intuitively, we know when we are doing things that we simply aren't drawn to do. I think we um, know it in some gut level, have some gut instinct, but I think we often just drown it out because we we know we have to do certain things or um, we think something is more socially accepted and we kind of override that gut instinct. So I think just training yourself to listen to your gut um, is one starting point. Um, you can also start in a reverse way. You can start with what drives you crazy. <laughs> You know, um, for example, I may go crazy when I hear people make absolute generalizations about health and well being. Well, that then means that one thing that really matters to me is that I value integrity of the science, I value nuance, right? So sometimes you can arrive at what really matters to you by starting at what really pushes your buttons and drives you crazy. I am absolutely excited to share an exclusive offer with the Proof community. This is a limited time offer just for my audience and no doctor referral is needed. Function Health is a comprehensive at-home blood testing service that gives you access to over 100 biomarkers, covering everything from heart, liver, kidney, and metabolic health to hormone levels, inflammation, and nutrient status. That, my friends, is five times more testing than the average physical. I chose Function for my own blood work and to be a sponsor of this show because they are the best in the world when it comes to helping you understand and own your health. It's true, the depth and quality of their testing is unrivaled. And as regular listeners of this show will know, you cannot optimize what you don't measure. Don't guess, test. Use Function to know exactly where your health is today, and then intervene with evidence-based medicine and lifestyle changes to feel your best and reduce your risk of chronic disease. With Function, you get access to very important markers like LP little a, a genetically driven cardiovascular risk factor, ApoB, the most predictive marker of atherosclerosis, and LH and FSH, reproductive hormones typically missing from standard lab panels. It's not uncommon for these biomarkers and others to be elevated. For example, over 50% of Function members have an ApoB level, and over 20% have an LPA little level that is above the optimal range. You can even add on harder to access tests like cystatin C, a very sensitive marker of kidney function, as well as selenium and iodine nutrients that are essential for thyroid and overall health, yet rarely tested. So what are you waiting for? Run over to functionhealth.com forward slash Simon Hill today and be one of 1000 listeners to score a $100 credit. That's functionhealth.com forward slash Simon Hill.